if you're just joining us, we're approaching two minutes from the very first flight of Boeing CST-100 Starliner to the International Space Station. 159. Vehicle internal. 155. Block sequencer start. 150. Securing Centaur LH-2. Securing Centaur LH-2. The rocket is now on internal power as well. Both Atlas and Centaur tanks. Launch enabled. 137. FTS armed. That was the flight termination software. With Atlas veers off course. OC is armed. FCS count started, EDS is sent mode. That was that emergency detection system, EDS. 50 minus one minute. Rock report range status. Range green. 54. PLP started. seconds. T minus 25 seconds. Status check. Go Atlas. Go Centaur. Go Starliner. Go Starliner. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And lift off the rise of Starliner and a new era in human spaceflight. Now 10 seconds into flight. People speak on the pitch over the program. Body rate responses look good. Now 15 seconds in. B is gone to close control. Party money looks good at the rest. through max Q, maximum dynamic pressure. Chamber pressures on both SRVs continue to look good. RD-180 engine operating parameters also continue to look good. Now passing one minute end of flight. And Mach 1, Atlas 5 is now supersonic. And vehicle now throttling up. Engine response looks good. Continue to see good chamber pressure on both SRVs. One minute, 20 seconds into flight. Body rate responses on the vehicle look good. One minute, 30 seconds in, standing by for SRV burnout. And we have burnout on both solid rocket boosters. Atlas will hold on to the SRVs for an additional 48 seconds prior to jettison. RD-180 has gone back up to full thrust as expected. Engine response looks good. One minute, 50 seconds in. Atlas is now 17 miles in altitude, 11 and a half miles downrange distance, traveling at 2,300 miles per hour. Now passing two minutes into flight. RD-180 engine operating parameters continue to look good at full thrust. And at 2 minutes 11 seconds into flight, the Atlas rocket now weighs just one half of what it did at launch, burning propellant at a rate of 2,800 pounds per second. And we've seen good indication of jettison of both solid rocket boosters. Vehicle's gone to closed loop guidance. Now just under 2 minutes remaining in the booster phase of flight. 2 minutes 35 seconds into flight. RD-180 continues to perform well. Engine's now throttling down slightly. Engine response looks good. 
and Atlas V is now traveling at over five times the speed of sound. Centaur reaction control system is now pressurizing the flight levels. System response looks good. Three minutes, 10 seconds into flight. Atlas V is now 38 miles in altitude, 80 miles downrange distance, traveling at 5,800 miles per hour. RD-180 engine operating parameters continue to look good. Now one minute remaining until engine cutoff. Body rate responses continue to look good throughout the booster phase of flight. And RD-180 is now throttling to maintain a constant 3.5G acceleration limit. Engine responses will all look good. Three minutes, 55 seconds into flight. And Centaur has begun the boost phase chill down sequence. 20 seconds to Vico. RD-180 continuing to look good as it throttles to maintain that constant 3.5G acceleration limit. Atlas PU has gone to open loop in preparation for Biko. And standing by for Biko. And we have Biko booster engine cutoff, standing by for stage separation. And we have good indication of stage separation. We have pre-start on the RL-10. Standing by for ignition. We have ignition and full thrust on both RL-10 engines. Chamber pressures look good on both engines. We have confirmation of ascent cover jettison on Starliner. And we have good indication of aeroskirt jettison. Centaur now resuming active attitude control after successful aeroskirt jettison. Chamber pressures on both RL-10 engines continue to look good. This was a very critical piece of the mission here. Staging is always a very dynamic piece of flight. Now passing five minutes, 30 seconds into flight. We have ignition and we have liftoff of the United Launch Alliance Atlas V rocket. The Atlas V RD-180 main engine and two solid rocket boosters ignite to generate more than a million and a half pounds of thrust to lift the rocket on its flight to the International Space Station. Shortly after liftoff, Atlas begins a pitch over to attain the proper flight path while minimizing the dynamic pressure the vehicle experiences during flight. To ensure crew safety and comfort, the Atlas V rolls to a heads-up position and uses booster engine throttle to limit vehicle acceleration to 3.5 Gs. The Atlas V reaches Mach 1 at the speed of sound at 1 minute 6 seconds. The two SRBs are jettisoned at 2 minutes 21 seconds. At 4 minutes 29 seconds, propellant levels deplete and the booster engine shuts down. Six seconds later, the Atlas Centaur separation system activates to release the booster stage. The vehicle now weighs less than 9% of what it did at liftoff. Jettison of the ascent cover occurs at 4 minutes 41 seconds. The ascent cover protects critical hardware on top of the spacecraft and provides an aerodynamic shape for ascent through the atmosphere. Four seconds later, burn of the dual engine Centaur begins. This burn guides the Centaur to an elliptical suborbital trajectory toward the ISS at an inclination of approximately 51.6 degrees, matching that of the ISS. Approaching aeroskirt jettison, the Centaur is burning propellant at a rate of 100 pounds per second, traveling at more than 10,488 miles per hour, and located 78 miles in altitude and 250 miles downrange. The ULA-designed aeroskirt extends the Starliner surface, enhancing its aerodynamic characteristics and stability, and minimizing the loads of this unique crewed configuration. At approximately 5 minutes, 5 seconds, the aeroskirt is jettisoned. Nearly 12 minutes into flight, 
cutoff of the Centaur main engines, or MECO-1, occurs. The mission now enters a suborbital coast phase in preparation for separation. Centaur's suborbital trajectory design enhances crew safety by providing a shallow orbit more favorable for an abort if required, and ensures the Centaur will naturally deorbit, impacting the ocean off the southwest coast of Australia. At 14 minutes and 55 seconds, Centaur releases the CST-100 Starliner on its orbital flight test. Shortly after separation, Starliner's engines ignite taking it the rest of the way to the ISS, a first step in the return of astronauts to space from U.S. soil. And now coming up on nine minutes into flight, Centaur is 101 miles in altitude, 1,200 miles downrange distance, traveling at 14,300 miles per hour. Now the two control rooms you are looking at on the left, that is ULA's Denver Operations Control Center. They are a backup control room for the control room on the right, which is the actual Atlas Space Flight Operations Center. They were the ones who launched the rocket about nine and a half minutes ago. As you can see, everyone is locked in on their screens, monitoring data. You might have noticed there wasn't much excitement during launch, but ULA will be happy once we get to a stage separation, which is coming up almost 15 minutes after launch, so about five minutes from now. Centaur system performance remains nominal throughout this burn, continuing to see stable values on our fuel and oxidizer tank pressures, main vehicle battery temperatures and pressures, and continuing to see good pressures on our helium and hydrazine storage bottles. Telemetry quality has been good throughout this burn, only seeing very uh, brief minor dropouts. Now approximately one minute remaining in the burn. So once again, Centaur. after Starliner separates from Centaur coming up in about four minutes, Starliner will circularize its orbit with an orbital insertion burn. Again, about 30 seconds to a main engine cutoff. Chamber pressures on both RL-10s continue to look good. Now ahead of main engine cutoff, we are seeing good tank pressure on Starliner itself. Batteries are in a nominal temperature, good pressure sensor readings from Starliner as it prepares to free fly for the first time in orbit. Standing by for main engine cutoff. And we have Miko, main engine cutoff. Body rate responses have remained very stable. Now passing 12 minutes into flight. Now Starliner will stay attached to Centaur again until about 15 minutes. Expected to separate at 14 minutes and 58 seconds after liftoff. And that will be the first time Starliner free flies in orbit. And at that point, Richard Jones and his team in Houston will have full control over the vehicle. And they will set it up for an orbital insertion burn that will take place 16 minutes after separation.
approximately two minutes now remaining until OFT capsule separation. Body rate responses uh, continue to look very stable throughout this coast. So you're looking at the Boeing Mission Control Center there. At this point, they have transitioned to a mission support room. The people you're seeing sitting on console designed, tested, and built Starliner. They are the experts on the systems. So if flight controllers need any help, they will be the ones answering the call. 13 minutes, 30 seconds into flight. Now in just over a minute, we're expecting to hear that Starliner has separated from the vehicle. about one minute now remaining until OFT separation. Body rates in the roll pitch and yaw direction all very close to null. and about 30 seconds away from spacecraft set. Now standing by for spacecraft separation. And we have good indication of separation of the OFT capsule. There it is. ULA has successfully completed their piece of the mission. Starliner is free flying for the first time in space. From here, the Johnson Space Center mission controllers will be flying Starliner. We will hear reports exclusively from there. <laughs>